My name is Robert Merritt. I am the director of thoracic surgery at the Ohio State uh, Wexner Medical Center. Today I'm going to present uh, a topic on the surgical management of esophageal cancer. Specifically, I will discuss the minimally invasive esophagectomy approach. Uh, this uh, talk will cover the management of esophageal cancer. I will give an overview of esophagectomy techniques. I will also discuss the outcomes of minimally invasive esophagectomy. In addition, I will review the Ohio State experience with esophagectomy for esophageal cancer. Currently, esophageal cancer is a relatively rare uh, disease. The overall incidence is approximately 4.8 cases per 100,000 persons in the United States. There are currently 17,900 new cases of esophageal cancer in the United States each year. A equal amount of deaths are anticipated each year. Squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma comprise 90% of all cases of esophageal cancer. Unfortunately, more than 50% of esophageal cancers are unresectable at the time of diagnosis. Uh, staging is a very important part of determining the treatment for esophageal cancer. Uh, the tumor node metastasis staging system is based on a clinical evaluation of esophageal cancer spread and extent using imaging studies. The two most important imaging studies or diagnostic studies that are used for staging of esophageal cancer includes endoscopic ultrasound or EUS. EUS is 80 to 90% accurate in detecting the T stage or the depth of penetration of the esophageal tumor in the wall of the esophagus and it is 70 to 80% accurate in detecting the end stage, which is spread to lymph nodes in the local regional area. A PET-CT scan is a survey of the entire body to look for metastatic spread of the esophageal cancer to other parts of the body and also to the regional lymph nodes. This will tell clinicians the stage of the tumor and will be a guide for the treatment of the esophageal cancer. This graph depicts the breakdown of the staging system for esophageal cancer. Uh, survival is directly linked to the uh, clinical stage of the esophageal cancer. Uh, patients with early stage esophageal cancer, such as stage zero to stage one, have a much better overall survival compared to patients who have locally advanced esophageal cancer, such as stage 2A to stage 3, and also to patients that have stage 4 disease, where the cancer is spread to other parts of the body. The management of esophageal cancer is dictated by the stage of the cancer. For early stage esophageal cancer, stage 1 and 2, the treatment of choice is esophagectomy, which is surgical removal of the esophageal tumor with reconstruction. The other option for tumors that are relatively small and isolated to the uh, superficial layer of the esophagus, uh, endoscopic mucosal resection or EMR is an option for local excision of the tumor. For locally advanced esophageal cancer, which is stage three, Neoadjuvant chemoradiation or chemoradiation given before surgery is usually the choice uh, for most uh, clinicians. Once patients have completed the chemoradiation, they will then proceed to esophagectomy, which is surgical removal of the esophageal tumor and the local lymph nodes. For patients who cannot tolerate surgery, a second option is called definitive chemoradiation where patients are treated primarily with chemotherapy and concurrent radiation uh, for their esophageal cancer. For patients with advanced esophageal cancer or stage four, they are treated with palliative chemotherapy and radiation. The CROSS trial was a very important research study comparing patients who received preoperative 
chemotherapy and radiation followed by surgery compared to patients who had surgery alone for locally advanced esophageal cancer. As you can see here from this Kaplan-Meier survival plot, patients who received chemoradiation prior to surgery had a better overall survival compared to patients who had surgery alone. Uh, this study was a landmark study and is the current standard of treatment or care uh, for patients with locally advanced esophageal cancer. Neoadjuvant chemoradiation uh, has been shown not to increase the postoperative complications uh, for patients who have received chemoradiation prior to surgery. This is a study uh, that I published in the Annals of Thoracic Surgery in 2011, and I compared a group of patients who had neoadjuvant chemotherapy and radiation, followed by esophagectomy to patients who had esophagectomy alone. And as you can see here in a direct comparison, there was no significant difference in the frequency of complications, uh, including individual complications such as pneumonia and anastomotic leak, and also total complications. This diagram uh, demonstrates the uh, types of esophagectomy techniques that are currently available. Uh, the traditional open operation, which involves a thoracic incision and a uh, abdominal incision uh, is called the Ivor Lewis esophagectomy. Uh, this operation involves a reconstruction of the stomach and the esophagus within the chest cavity. Uh, this operation uh, has been uh, very popular because it allows the surgeon to remove a large number of lymph nodes. The one downside of this operation is because of the open thoracotomy incision, uh, there is a higher rate of respiratory complications associated with this operation. The transhiatal operation involves a abdominal incision and a transabdominal dissection of the esophagus. The reconstruction of the esophagus in the stomach is performed in the neck and avoids a open chest uh, surgery. Uh, this is important because the respiratory rate or the respiratory complication rates are much lower. Uh, patients, however, uh, have been shown to have fewer lymph, lymph nodes removed with this particular technique. The thoracoscopic and laparoscopic esophagectomy is a minimally invasive operation, which uh, does not involve an open abdominal operation or chest operation. This operation is done completely minimally invasively, uh, which increases the, um, the tolerability for patients and has a much shorter uh, length of stay in the hospital and a much lower complication rate. The first report of a totally minimally invasive Ivor Lewis esophagectomy was, re was reported in 2001. Uh, the patient was a 34-year-old male who presented with a locally advanced gastroesophageal junction tumor. The patient underwent a total laparoscopic and thoracoscopic operation with an intrathoracic reconstruction of the esophagus and the stomach. Uh, the operation was very successful and the patient was discharged home on postoperative day number eight. This is a summary of the initial experience with total laparoscopic and thoracoscopic iris esophagectomy, which I published in 2012. Uh, the complication rates uh, for this operation are very low with a very low uh, postoperative complication rate and a very low mortality rate. The uh, operation is performed in two stages. The first portion of the operation is performed through laparoscopic incisions as shown here in this diagram. During the laparoscopic portion of the operation, uh, the stomach is completely detached from all of its uh, intra-abdominal attachments, which includes a greater omentum, uh, the gastrohepatic ligament, and then the short gastric vessels along the greater curvature of the stomach adjacent to the spleen. Uh, during this phase of the operation, uh, the right gastroepipoic artery shown here 
is preserved, which will provide blood circulation uh, for the stomach during the uh, reconstruction. Uh, in this diagram here, you can see the stomach is located here, and then the omentum is being separated uh, from the edge of the stomach. The second important part of the abdominal phase of the operation is the division of the left gastric artery and vein, which allows the stomach to become mobile and to be transferred into the uh, right thoracic cavity for reconstruction. The formation of the gastric conduit is completed with a linear stapler by dividing between the gastric cardia, which is the most proximal part of the stomach, and then the fundus of the stomach shown here. This creates a perfect gastric tube, which is then able to be transferred through the esophageal hiatus into the right thoracic cavity for reconstruction. The thoracoscopic access incisions uh, for the thoracoscopic portion of the operation are very small, 10 millimeters to five millimeters. And then there is a four centimeter access incision, uh, which allows the uh, specimen to be removed. During the thoracoscopic portion of the operation, the esophagus is detached from all of the connections within the thoracic cavity to allow full mobility of the esophagus. Uh, the tumor is located here. The esophagus is divided here with at least a five to six centimeter margin to lower the chances of a local recurrence at the reconstruction site. The esophageal gastric anastomosis is performed with a circular stapler, which is inserted into the stomach and deployed on the greater curvature of the stomach. An anvil is placed within the esophagus which connects to the circular stapler, uh, which is closed and then uh, deployed, creating a perfect esophageal gastric anastomosis. The excess stomach is then removed with the linear stapler. This is a uh, picture of one of our circular staplers, which is used to perform the esophageal gastric anastomosis. And this is the anvil, which is deployed uh, into the esophagus. These are a list of the minimally invasive viral Lewis esophagectomy uh, studies that are currently published in the literature. Uh, the Ohio State experience is listed at the bottom here. We reported over 160 cases with a median length of stay of eight days in the hospital. Our mortality rate is exceedingly low at 0.8%, and then our anastomotic leak rate is 3.1%. And our results are, are very outstanding relative to the other published series in the literature. This graph here shows that the frequency of complications is directly related to the percentage of patients that are able to be discharged home on the target post-operative day number eight. 82% uh, of our patients who have no complications are discharged on target day, post-op day eight. However, if patients have one or more complications, uh, then only 56% of the patients are allowed to be discharged home uh, on the target discharge date. The Ohio State uh, program was given a composite quality rating of three stars, which is the highest uh, for excellent uh, quality and outcomes for esophagectomy. Uh, the ratings are based on the absence of mortality and also the absence of major complications. As you can see here, Ohio State uh, in the mortality category is outperforming uh, the median performance and we are currently very close to the 95th percentile. Similarly, for absence of mortality, uh, the Ohio State program uh, is exceeding the median in the 75th percentile, and we're very close to the 97th percentile. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, this is Robert Merritt, uh, Division of Thoracic Surgery.